Hey, Velomobile fans, long time no see. If you're wondering where I went the last few weeks, well, I've been kind of busy with a container shipment of Velomobiles, and I'll post a video about that later. But uh, I have a few clients that had their bikes delivered to them, and uh, I wasn't able to help them because we didn't actually physically meet. And so now they need to get their seats set up and their chain resized and their bottom bracket moved. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I go about uh, resizing the chain once I get my seats set up. So first, a few principles. You want to sit ideally as far forward in the bike as you can. In my case, I have an Urban and I sit in the third seat slot back. Uh, and that's pretty far forward in the Urban. I wouldn't go any further forward unless you are shorter than five foot six. Most riders are on the tall side, they're, so they're gonna end up with their seat all the way back. If you're running out of spots to move your seat back and you feel like you could go further back without hitting the wheel well, let me know because there are new seat brackets. They just involve drilling new holes in the bottom of the Velomobile, which is less than ideal. But uh, once you get your seat in the ideal position, uh, then you want to work on your front bottom bracket. In my case, I've ended up bringing the bottom bracket back in my Urban and I'm about halfway up the boom, which is where I usually end up. I have a little bit more room that I could go further back, but I don't need to because I'm happy with where my seat position is. Uh, riders with larger feet, of course, there's going to be a limit to how far forward you can go because you're going to run out of foot room eventually. But usually you can get several more inches more forward. The other thing you need to watch is back here and this is what's going to determine um, how much you need to add or subtract from your chain. I use big ring in the back and the big ring in the front to size mine but there's other ways to do it and Jan from Velomobile World has a really good video on their YouTube channel about how he resizes the chain but ideally you want the derailleur cage aimed this way towards about 5 o'clock, 4.30 or 5 is a good position. So you can see mine is aimed to about 6.30 right now, which means my cage is too long. And when I go into the small ring up in the front, this little itty bitty thing here, I'm gonna have quite a bit of extra chain for that derailleur cage to take up. And I'm only gonna be able to use right now one or two of the small gears. And while I don't normally use more than that, it's better not to have a lot of chain slack. So I'm looking at the chain and it looks like I'm gonna take out three complete links. A complete link goes from here, here to here. And I'll show you what the complete look, link looks like once I take it out. But what I'm gonna need to do first is I'm going to need to find up here in the chain where the quick link is and I'm going to back pedal and then I see right here this is the quick link I'm going to then put the chain down here on the small ring so that I have more slack in the chain to work with and ideally you would put the rear uh, cassette the chain on one of those smaller rings as well uh, but I usually don't do that because I have a special trick and I'll show you that in a second Okay, so the chain is set and ready to remove some links and I'll show you what I did I've pulled the chain off completely and Hopefully you can see down in here This piece of wire. It's a piece of copper household wire It's fairly stiff wire and I learned this trick from my friend Roger I made a hook on either side of it and I hook it into the chain so that it holds the chain slack like this and then I'm going to disconnect this quick link here using these Park Tool quick link uh, pliers. That's the easiest way to open the link and then I can start to remove some chain links. This is what a quick link looks like. It's designed to be opened and closed and using these pliers you just grab 
on either side of the link. It's hard to do it with one hand. But you would insert it like that and then you squeeze it to open the link and then you'll do the opposite to, to um, <clears throat> put the link back in. Now that I've got this out, I'm going to remove three complete links. And three means I've got this open end like this and then all the way through the plate. That's considered one complete link. And I need to leave another open end like this so that I can insert the quick link. And then on the other side, I have an open end there as well. So to take these out, I'm going to use my tool. And we just insert the link into this gap here. I don't know how well you can see, but this gap here. And then we're going to twist this end, and it's going to compress the pin and push it out in this other side. So as you can see, I've got one, two, three of these plates. And I've got the tool set up like this. This is called a chain breaker. And I just continue turning the black handle until it pushes the pin all the way out. So there's my three links and there you can see the pin that was in there holding the chain together. And now I'll just reinsert the quick links using my quick link tool. I'll pull them tight to snap them back together. You'll feel, in fact you'll hear the snap when it reconnects. And then your chain is resized. Here you can see the piece of wire that I use as a hook. Of course, if you have to move your bottom bracket further forward and you need to add more chain links, you'll need a second quick link and you'll insert it on the other end of the piece of chain that you're adding so that you have a quick link on either end of the piece of chain because otherwise you can't add more chain. But uh, there it's done and uh, for me, it's maybe a two or three minute job, but I've also done it a few times. So now let's get the chain back up into the big chain ring and let's check and make sure that I took out the right number of links. Okay, so this could be a little bit further over. I could take one more link out, but I may opt to move the bottom bracket a little bit more yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave it the way it is right now. And that's it. That's how you resize the chain. It's just a couple of quick links. Uh, the tools that I use, the quick link pliers. In theory, you could use uh, needle nose pliers. It is easier with the quick link pliers. A uh, chain breaker tool is something that's handy to have. They're tools that aren't super expensive and they're something that's worth owning as a, as a cyclist because you never know when you're going to need to install or remove a quick link. And it's also, of course, very handy to have if you pull your chain out uh, to clean it. Otherwise, you can see if your local bike shop will help you out. Uh, they, of course, know how to size the chain with Big Big and all of that stuff. So, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, remember to like and subscribe and uh, watch for more new videos coming now that I'm past the, uh, the uh, busiest part of the container shipment. Bye!